everybody. Uh, my name is Lenore von Stein, and this is an episode of The Facts, and I'm here with Andrew Bolotowski and Beth Griffith. And the three of us were part of w what was a quartet until a, a few weeks ago with, another, with a man named Bern Nix, a guitar player named Bern Nix, quite a wonderful musician, and Bern died uh, several weeks ago. And so we, 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 we're, we're here to discuss what it was like to, to work with him, to hang out with him, to know him. Um, uh, and uh, I met Byrne decades ago when I was working in a, in a place called the Knitting Factory, the original Knitting Factory. And, um, and I was, I was uh, doing a series of shows over a period of time, and, and I was very disgruntled with the musicians that I was working with because I thought they would keep on throwing me banal stuff. They were, everybody was very skilled, but it, still it wasn't anything interesting, and I get caught in my own cliches. And uh, I'm, I, I, I was talking about this to, a, to, a, to the jazz singer, Ellen Christie, and she said, well, maybe you ought to try Burn Nicks. And um, so I, uh, I, I, because during that period of time, you could hear e each other, you know, go to the shows that people did, and you could st s hear the rehearsals too. So in one of these places, I heard Burn, and and I uh, uh, started working with him, and and uh, we dis we had discussed this earlier. One of the things that I, the reason she was right, I didn't always like what he did. I never always liked what he did. But it always surprised me. It always, or or it threw me off. It you know not surprising like oh, but it 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 made me go somewhere I didn't expect to go, and that's what I was looking for, and that's what what. Um, uh, so we worked together for many years, uh, many many years, and the last maybe twenty, maybe a little less than that, I worked with. These two people and yes. Byrne, and we formed this this quartet. And for seven years, we've been doing this. The facts. We're in our seventh year, um, and it's it's it it it's, it's unusual for ensembles to stay together for long periods of time. Because uh, I also think that the the, the mesh of uh, kind of, of uh, seriousness and uh, affability uh, made this thing flow. Um, you know, when somebody dies, it's so, it's so bizarre. Really, they're not there anymore. I mean, I I miss him. I miss. I, he he lived not far from me, so I would see him in the street sometimes. And and you know, it, we didn't always get along. It's not that it's all you know, Roy Roy Goli or you know what these kind of things they say it. But he was a he was a person of substance, and. He was well. Everybody is, but I mean, he was he was a real artist. Uh, he was. He really worked to get people who like this stuff. He, he was constantly working to get better, and 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 and. Um, and he worked worked with a range of people. Well, uh, you were saying something about when we were talking about the other day at rehearsal how he maintained his burnness, his center all the time, no matter what he was doing. Um, and yeah, that was. I guess that is kind of what I admired about him. One of the things that he never tried to. What's one, one of the things I'm always trying to do? Not try so hard. Burn didn't ever. He was always just there and doing, doing <laughs> it. He didn't have to try to do it. He was never behind the ball, I guess, in a very um, a unique way. Not many people can do that. Lots of people are always trying to do it. I, but a teacher of mine always said, would sing with both feet in the bucket. And, and, and a lot of people are always just looking at the bucket and never get in. Vern was always standing right in the bucket. Didn't matter what was inside it either. If the water was cold or hot, he could always adapt. It was kind of phenomenal. And he was so dignified. I just have to say one thing, too, I just love. Sometimes I would walk home with him after rehearsals. And because he was always so smart, and you and he were always talking about stuff, I I didn't know a lot of the details of what you were talking about. <laughs> well. And so I was always going, oh, no, I had to walk with Bern, and he's going to say something that I can't, that I can't join in the conversation about. But 
And then he would always kiss my hand when we left. I would always go, kiss him on the cheek. Bye, Burn. See you next week. And I'd go, sure, I made it. And I didn't embarrass myself. And he would always take my hand and kiss my hand. I just was so, I thought it was such a, and it wasn't like, it was such a beautiful thing to do. Anyway, he was incredibly smart and, and educated and well, well-rounded as a musician, but he never, but he didn't ever fly his feathers or something. Yeah. It was amazing. Right. Well, the first thing that I've noticed, <laughs> you know, I, he's been gone now oh, a little over a month, month and a half. Yeah. And, and, and uh, it just hit me today because we've just completed the taping of two episodes. And when I would come to the studio, it was always sort of the same routine, which is, he was always the first one there. And so you'd come in and you'd look, you know, from the street level down and you'd see him and he'd give you this sort of look or he'd give me this look like, well, here we go again. <laughs> and it was sort of like that. And this time he wasn't there to give me that look. And it just hit me. That's it. Yeah. Um, it's a real shame. Yeah. Byrne was very well read. I'm not sure if it had to do with the fact that he was on the road a lot and he was always reading, oh. but he was extraordinarily well read. And you could ask him on any literary topic, on anything that was arcane, and he would know. He just did. And it was remarkable. But our conversations and rehearsals, the little side things were sort of a combination of these little sort of questions about literary facts and and uh, dirty jokes that was sort of we mixed the two together and that's what I think you were you yeah. were being polite about but that's what was going on yeah. all the time it was sort of like that um the dirty jokes are part of the gestalt of the band you know you, yes. you guys telling the dirty jokes and Beth and I just <laughs> yeah, mama yes, me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, we, guys. I don't know what you were doing yeah. I, that's what I was doing yeah I was enjoying the fact that they could do that and yeah. that they would <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just what we would do. I enjoyed playing with Bern. I mean, for me, it was it was not even, let's say that he was a guitarist or that he was a jazz guitarist and probably one of the best in the world. It was his his soul. It was a wonderful thing to be in the same room with him. That was it. You know, that was that was absolutely remarkable. He had this sort of quality. And of course, you're right. He never was strutting himself. He never did that. He never would do a routine where he would sort of play the Iran West concerto on the guitar <laughs> to show you that he really knew how to play. Never, never. If he, if he was not doing something with a piece that we were rehearsing, he wasn't playing. You know, He would play when he was called upon to play, and then all sorts of things would happen. And it was things that were always uh, there were all sorts of chordal things with color, coloration, things that were quite subtle uh, that if you weren't paying attention, you'd say, well, okay, he's a guitarist, but if you actually listen, they were really quite remarkable. They really were. Um, and, well, he's not going to be there. That's it. Um, and that's, that's the real shame, that you have this marvelous soul. Um, again, and he was unique in that sense we can say uh, uh, it's very hard to describe in other words you could say oh he was poetic well yes he was poetic and he was also he was very sort of stable uh, in terms of his personality it wasn't like you'd come for a rehearsal and you're going to have a different burn every single time he was burned um, and all of that's not going to be around that's a real shame it really is one of the things that he was, like, like many artists, and especially in, in my opinion, many serious artists, is that they have a really hard time uh, recognition-wise and, and making a living. And Byrne talked about this endlessly. And he, to my ears, he said the same things over and over and over and over and over again. And he couldn't find his way out of that paper bag. And very early in his career, he had gotten some real recognition. I mean. It, and then even later, I mean, Downbeat had him as the 10 best uh, 
guitar players in the world. And when you heard him, you know, these things are silly, but it, when you heard him when he was really hot, I mean, it was, it was, it was something. It was really something. It was it, it, it. I, I don't. I, I can't express it in words. But it. But it. it the, the the unhappiness of his life, like many people in the arts, is that is that it, it was so hard, and he he really struggled with poverty, and uh, really struggled with poverty, and and with health problems, which eventually you know took his life, um, and I, I don't you know you know, just you know to 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 fill out the the picture, and he he. Um, but he soldiered on. I mean, he I, he couldn't imagine not being an artist, not yeah. not doing this. He couldn't. He couldn't. Why would you do that? You know, yeah. uh, and uh, and he did teach some, uh, and I, I think he he, he 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 liked his. You know, he liked teaching, but um, you know, this was a guy who may have practiced four hours a day, or you know, a lot. A lot, although he didn't always practice as much as I wanted to on some of this stuff, because I could tell when he hadn't shed. Um, but um, he was. We were talking about <clears throat> last year. I had a, I had to go to the hospital for an operation, and Burn and Beth came to pick me up at the at the hospital, and and Burn really didn't want to be there. He, he he was tired of hospitals. You know, maybe he wouldn't have wanted to be there anyway. But he had to deal with all these doctors and hospitals for many years. And um, but he came anyway, you know. And, and, and that was the other thing about Burn personally. I mean, we were colleagues and we were friends—not close friends, but friends, consistent friends for many decades. And he—he he really was that one of those people that if you needed him, he was there. You know, he was yeah. there. Uh, I and I. And likewise, I was there if he needed me. It, it, but he, you know, that's. That's, that's something, you know. Some, you know that, and there he was at the hospital, looking. Oh God, we get out of here, like this, you know. And um, when you talked about poverty or whatever, there's always, of course, with all musicians, they hope that they'll have this magical, successful moment, which will propel them, you know, for the rest of their lives, and it doesn't. I don't think it ever quite works that way for anybody, um, but we all like to think that that's what happens. And there was a video that I stumbled on, which was when he was playing with Ornette Coleman, and it's a video of a performance on Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. And, and it's a remarkable performance. The whole group uh, with Ornette, there are three guitars and there are two percussionists, and there's Ornette, it's absolutely remarkable. And um, uh, I said, I saw that, and I was very impressed by the whole thing. And he said, yeah, he said, you know, um, we did that, and uh, I thought my life was going to be made, and everything was going to take off from that point. And he said, but at the end of the same month, I was back working with the same moving company, only this time, we were moving boxes onto that very stage that I had performed at with Ornette <laughs> earlier in the month. He said, but that's, I can't remember if he said, that's my life, or if he said, that's the life of a jazz musician. It was one of those two things that he said, and that's, I remember that. <sighs> but we all, well, well, I don't know if we all have things like that. I never worked for a moving company, <laughs> so I never had to think like that. Thank goodness. But, um, well, Anyhow, but it was, it was again, uh, uh, there was always this, this seamless quality, let's say, when we'd have rehearsals between the sort of the conversations that we would have about all sorts of things, discussions of the music sort of going sort of in and out, discussions of sort of various aspects of arcane literature. Uh, I think I talked to him about Ubu Roi, you know, the... He plays by Alfred Jarry, yeah, yeah, and he knew that. all of that. Yeah. And I was talking to him about pataphysics, you know, the sort of absurd uh, uh, things, the physical properties of various things in the world, and how you do these sort of they're they're authentic experiments. But it's sort of like you say, why bother? But that's that's the idea of 
of pataphysics, I suppose. I don't know, but anyhow. But he knew about all of that. You know, that was that, that, that's what he was. When, when, when we're rehearsing, or when I'm talking about, I, mean, I, I often try to talk to all of you, of course, included Byrne, about uh, what a piece of music means to me, why I wrote it, what I was thinking about and stuff. And usually, uh, nobody says anything. You know, I just, <laughs> I just say that, and I say that, and that's so I don't know if it's it just, uh, you know, uh, useless, it, 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 it gets in the way. I don't, I don't know what, you know, the thing is. And that was, that was true with Byrne, too. He, 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 I would tell him these stories. And he, Byrne worked with, with poets. He worked with lots of different people. He worked, he, he, he was able to, to um, he was able to adapt to lots of people with, while staying himself. We're going back to that theme, while staying himself. Um, it, towards, in the last I don't know. Ten years of his life is one of the one of the one of the real drags. Was that it was very hard for progressive as he was a progressive jazz musician. I mean, even to call yourself a jazz musician is absurdity, and uh, in my mind. But he he had long left uh, uh, tonality behind. Left left. Well, maybe not tonality, but anyway, he had moved forward into free jazz. He was playing free jazz thirty years ago, and um, you know if, if you know. It, it, Jazz is, you know, like any like any form of anything, you know, grown out of some folk folk tradition that grows and grows and grows and becomes more sophisticated, and more sophisticated, and then some of them just fall off the edge, you know, they just disappear, and maybe that's in fact what's happened to jazz more or less. But it it, it it's very hard for a musician that that plays like Byrne to even with his reputation, he had fairly big reputation in jazz to get a job in a club and not play, you know, the man I love or, you know, so, you know, and play in the, and, and, and I don't think that he, I don't know, because I never went to those things, whether he ever succumbed to that too much, he talk about it, and I knew that was the, that was the problem, uh, that it was, it was very hard, there were very few places that you could play that you could, that you could move forward that you could take this idiom to the next step and to the next step. And, that, and, and I think that's part of what must have roiled him, I'm guessing, you know, that it was, that it, 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 it was, it was hard. In, there are, there certainly is a whole group of people that are doing that, and he was part of that group. Um, but they have, their opportunities are so limited. Um, I don't know, it just seems to me a lot more would happen if they were, uh, there was more places for them to let it happen in, develop this, develop this, develop this, so that it becomes even, you know, more expressive, more expressive. I mean, what makes for a, a serious music more expressive, more, 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 mm. more, more, more. And, and, you know, he was capable of all these nuances, of all these, of all these colors and flavors. Um, yeah. And, um, but he, he was... Yeah caught in the in the in the in the mercantile world of 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 is it, I don't know whether there's a self censorship that comes in this into this story too I, that's something that artists deal with all the time I know I do I I just saw I was at the Whitney and I saw a picture by Larry Rivers and I couldn't believe how brave it was <laughs> I couldn't believe how how oh my god what guts to paint that um, and, you know, Byrne was in that fabric. He was in that, he was in that, he had those capabilities. He just struggled so much to, as, as so many of us do, to, um, to develop them, to, to develop the next, mm. And he was always under the he was always under the under the pall, and, and and some of it he liked, but most of it didn't. Of the years he spent with Ornette, you know, that was his claim to fame for a long time. Although he he did build his name by himself, but um, and harmonics, yeah. which he would talk about, which is he was completely as if it's nothing. It doesn't exist. What the heck is that harmonics? You know, and and I I remember spending more than one. A session at a bar, uh, trying to get him to explain to me what the heck a Rudy is harmonics, mm -hmm. and um, 
and he didn't know him. That was part of the whole uh, cult thing, is that, you know, it, I don't know, what is it? Uh, you know, is it a cat? Is it a dog? Is it, you know? Uh, and he was burned in the belly of the beast. And, uh, and, and that was part of the, I mean, if Byrne had lived, say Byrne lives another 50 years to sort through, because I, I keep on you know, thinking long life is very helpful if, yeah. if you're healthy, yeah. uh, to sort through these things, these, these things that roiled you, that upset you so much. Hmm. Um, and I think, I think they had a new album, or either it's finished and it's just coming out, his group, uh, or it has already come out. Um, I don't know, but I, you know, I, they were working on it, or they had just finished it. I think when he, uh, I knew that there was something very wrong because when he died, he didn't. Is he was supposed to be here for a taping, and he didn't show up. And I work with Byrne all these years. He never, never doesn't yeah. show up. And if something goes awry, he's always on the phone, you know. But that hardly ever happened, you know. And so I was, I, I was. I was really worried because mm. it was so unusual. Um, he kissed your hand. Yeah. He never kissed my hand. <laughs> he was always kissing my hand. <laughs> I felt like I was transported into. I felt Aww. like a lot of people it would it would come across as being fake because it's what you used to do and you know. But somehow with Burn it was so he could make things seem so natural. I, I would that when we first started working with this with your music and I and I didn't know much about Byrne but I knew <clears throat> his background and that he never ever questioned what we were doing playing this music. Right. A lot of people would. Oh, well, how do I approach this? Well, what do you mean by that? He never. No, he never. Why did. did you? Why did you put that there? Why is this? <laughs> no, well, that's not. Yeah. That's not in my range, you know. Yeah. He would just go. Well, I can't play that note, but uh, I can play this. He never. That's right. He would never. That's right. He was never disparaging or questioning. It was that oh, an amazing openness. And we. That's true. And it was also a very practical thing. Yeah. Like if you can keep it confined to two pages or at the most three, you know, and just sort of squeeze it all in so we don't have all these pages to turn. I mean, it was things like that. That's, that's, yeah. that's how he was. Yeah. Very practical that way. Uh -huh. And of course, you know, we did that, we did a piece with him by your friend, the composer, yeah. you know, and that was very that successful. Was yeah. that, that was wonderful. That was wonderful. It was yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Bathory Kids? Bathory Kids, yeah. Bathory Kids, yes. It was, and and yes, his, what he did with that, what yes. you all did, but yeah. it, it, it and was it's so... Yeah. And, and actually at one point, very early on, you wanted to do this little, I think it was a miniature cantata by Alessandro Scarlatti. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I played, yes. I played, yeah. I played the trumpet part yes. on the flute, <laughs> and it was fine. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and he played the continuo. Uh -huh. He did that. He was fine. I mean, I he, he yeah. didn't say, I don't do things no, like this. I know. He just did, did it. it. I know. He did. That's yeah. what he was like. Exactly. Yeah. No. <laughs> when it, he's, he's, when I, I, I told, because we lived not far from each other, and he'd walk around, I'd walk around, and I, and the couple of people I told that Bernard died, I knew, like, this is actor that lives around the corner from where I do and I live and I and whenever I see him he says da da da, da house burn and uh, so um, hmm. I, I went over to him and I told him that Burn had died and he was quite stunned and he said I just I just saw him I just saw him uh, f four days ago or something I just saw him you know hmm. and and um, in a way I'm I'm well, not in a way. I mean, I'm glad that he that the end of his life was not in some long drawn out illness. You know, it was yes, the, all these other illnesses before. Mm -hmm. But whatever happened uh, happened fairly quickly because he was out and about. We had seen him the week before, yeah. right? Um, and I think that some other people had seen him since. You know, oh, yeah. and so. 
I hope he didn't. Of course, I hope he didn't suffer. Um, and I told somebody else, and, and, oh, I know this guy used to write, uh, used to be a critic for the Village Voice, uh, and um, I told him that Bernard died, and he said, ah, I'm surprised the Times didn't pick it up. And uh, I was surprised, too, that the Times no. didn't pick it up. Uh, but not that surprised, like surprised yeah. and not surprised. And uh, I, I keep looking to see if they're going to find their way through. WBGO picked it up. A few other Jazz Times will pick it up. And um, I uh, I miss him. Well, uh, one of the camera people just said, we're moving forward. We've been looking for, I've been looking for other people to join us mm -hmm. even when Byrne was with us, mm -hmm. and we're still, that, that process is ongoing. Mm -hmm. And certainly we will go on, and other people will join us. And, and um, I, I like to think, of, I said this to you before, that it's not about the instrument. It's about the personality that we're, we're an ensemble of personalities uh -huh. that happen to sing or play the flute or play the guitar. But, you know, it could be, we actually had on occasion someone who played the trombone and you've had cellists and you've had violists, mm -hmm. you know, and they have had their, their personalities. That's the thing. Very, it's, We've got about, we've got about, I'm sorry, to, we've got about, oh, maybe 10 seconds, a little more than 10 seconds. Uh, well, Burn, we miss you yeah. very much. We, we miss you, Burn. We miss you we terribly. Miss you. I miss you okay? every day. You're the best, really. <sighs> Goodbye, my friend. <laughs>